So in the last class we discussed uh, Lagrangian for the Fermion fields, which is written here in the, on the blackboard, where this uh, the final Lagrangian. This comes out to be the Lagrangian for the Fermion fields. This part is the, for the Fermion fields, and this part uh, to make this Fermion fields uh, invariant, gauge invariant, we have to add this extra interaction part. This is the interaction of the automatic field with the Fermion field. Now, <coughs> that was not the total Lagrangian. We have to include the Lagrangian of the of the electromagnetic field also, and this is the part of the Lagrangian for the electromagnetic field. And we have discussed that the uh, this is the only the kinetic energy part of the electromagnetic field, and we have to ignore the potential energy part because uh, if you in include this uh, potential energy part, this is the Lagrangian for the electromagnetic field. Uh, uh, that is the spin one particle, we call it like Proca Lagrangian. And if you use this uh, Lagrangian here, you will find that uh, this is not gauge invariant by this transformation. This will be gauge, this will not be gauge invariant. To make this gauge invariant, we have to take this mass as zero. That's why uh, <laughs> the complete Lagrangian has only the kinetic energy part of the electromagnetic field. That's why we have written that <coughs> uh, the electromagnetic field uh, quanta, that is, say, photon, has rest mass zero. That's, that comes from there. Yeah. So this is the complete Lagrangian for the Fermat field. Uh, this is the uh, Lagrangian for the Fermat fields. This is the electromagnetic part, uh, Lagrangian for the electromagnetic, and this is the interaction part. So this is called the Lagrangian for uh, QED, electrodynamics, uh, Lagrangian for the quantum electrodynamics. So this is the Lagrangian for the. Now today we will discuss Higgs field. <coughs> As I told you that the Higgs field is a scalar field means it has no mass, uh, sorry, it has no charge and it is a spin zero. So, <laughs> it's a scalar field means it, its spin is zero and it has no charge. So, that's today's it's As we <coughs> told you that Higgs field is a, a scalar field, it has no charge, and there is no direction, that is a scalar field, but it interacts with itself. This is the property of the Higgs field that although it has charge zero, spin zero, but it interacts with itself. And that uh, interaction of the Higgs field gives you an extra potential energy. So the Lagrangian for the Higgs field is let the Higgs field is denoted by say phi. So the Lagrangian for this <coughs> Lagrangian of Higgs. Kinetic energy part, so it is one by two. <coughs> Minus potential energy part, sun. Uh, it's a pot it's in the potential energy for a particle we have half m d square. Oh, no, sorry, half k. Uh, uh, KX, KX square, K is equal to M omega square, X square. So it's the mass of the down here, and this is X square. So, <coughs> and that is half MV square. 
So it's the velocity means the variation of space with time here, velocity. The variation of field with space and time both moves for smart to both space and time. Here this mu and this mu duty here, this mu is the uh, indices. In it gives you 0, 1, 2, 3 components. 0 component for time component of these three are for space component. And this mu is related to the mass. A plus interaction potential because this field interacts with itself. So there must be an interaction potential. <coughs> that is self interaction. Field interacts with itself. Just this. So this can be as half. Not that this field is a scalar, that's why I am not writing it like this. this if had this been vector, this would be right like this. But since this is a scalar quantity, this can be written as simply <coughs> that as in the electromagnetic uh, field we have written like this. Then we say, where A is the electromagnetic potential, which is a vector quantity. <coughs> and we have discussed that why we write vectors like that. So this is minus uh, half mu square phi square plus the interaction part. Suppose the interaction part 1 by 4 lambda is some interaction constant and phi. So this is the kind of active part and these, both these are the only uh, uh, This is the potential that is without interaction. This is the potential energy without interaction and this is the potential energy self interaction the self interaction so this both these forms potential energy power Now this potential energy will have different <coughs> values at different position and time. Potential energy will have different values at different space, different space time values. This is all about Higgs uh, uh, Lagrangian. Now we will do spontaneous symmetry taking. Here the Lagrangian is the Lagrangian is symmetric about phi equal to zero because here we have five square terms, here also we have square terms, this is this means that field this is symmetric. 
this, this field is symmetric because this all of them are even powers. So whenever a Lagrangian is symmetric, that means something in the theory is to be conserved. Symmetric transformation does not change the physical transformation. So let us take let us let us take here as lambda as zero and consider if we consider only this part, no interaction term half then minus half square. So in that case we we have this potential energy part. And this potential energy here is dependent on phi square. So here, here lambda we have zero, no self interaction terms taken. So the potential energy in this case is proportional to phi square. <coughs> and uh, we have the variation of potential. Now if for what value of if you mean let mu square is positive, consider mu square is positive, then this will be the portion energy part and portion energy uh, varies, the variation of portion energy will be a parabolic Here the mass is real, and in this case, if you take the square square root of and negative of that square root is imaginary part. So the mass is here imaginary. The square root of positive is the real, but the square root of negative is imaginary. Imaginary mark, if it assume mu square as negative, 
the mass is imaginary and the fractionality curve is upside down. It means uh, it has no analogy of uh, the particle having in a cup. The particle cannot stay in this unequal position. And the particle will have to fall either on this side or on this side. So taking mu square as negative is a senseless idea. So, so the idea of taking mu as square as negative is senseless. The idea of okay, we can, the idea of taking mu square is so mu square is ruled out mu square as negative ruled out. Now consider the interaction part also. <coughs> Here you have not taken the interaction part. Now consider the interaction part also in the diagram. So the interaction part consists of 1 by 4 lambda 5 by 4. Now if you consider this, so this is our potential energy now. Now if you consider the interaction part and the potential energy is given by uh, half mu square pi square plus 1 by 4 lambda 5 by 4. Now if mu square is positive and lambda is a positive scalar. So the potential energy here is the sum of two uh, potential energy is a sum of phi square plus phi power four square. And we know that phi square will be fraction of phi square, the proportionality will be like just like parabola. Let's say phi square. And <coughs> phi 4 will also vary like parabola, but will be sharper. So the mass that is obtained as a result of excitation of the fields, excitation of fields, expansion of the fields will be real in this case. So <laughs> as the field varies excite, either goes plus pi or minus pi, you will get a real mass. It's just like a particle in a cup. <coughs> the potential energy is symmetric about pi is equal to zero and you get a real mass. Because suppose <coughs> we take, uh, let us take, let y is equal to 10 x square plus x power 4 and take the value of y uh, x for different values of x and y. Suppose we take uh, uh, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. So it's minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Substitute the values here and we get the values 4, 16, 171, 56, 11, 0, 
11, 56, and 71. The direction is the, uh, <coughs> the value of y is symmetric about it. So the field is symmetric about it. The graph is symmetric about y the field. And it's so just like a parabola and the, the, the part which is excited out of the field will be real and it's just like part moving inside the parabola. This is the variation or in the potential energy at one single point. Such variations may happen at every point in space. Thus, a slight perturbation of the field has occurred. <coughs> the excited part has a real mass. The excited part has a real mass, which we can think of a resistance to the change in the field values larger to smaller values of the field. This is a kind of inertia to the motion of the field which appears as a mass. Okay. Now consider <coughs> mu as negative. Here we have taken mu as positive and lambda as a positive scalar. Now consider mu as negative and lambda is again positive. Consider mu as m square as negative. <coughs> so this part of the potential which has minus here, so this will are parabolic graph but upside down. So the first part will have So we have the minimum value of the of the function energy at not at phi is equal to zero, but at two different values of the field. Yeah, at this point and at this point. This is the minimum potential energy part, which is less than zero. Energy is zero here, but less than zero. So the <coughs> Friction energy is zero, less than zero. The graph where the field has two values possible. <coughs> In this case, the field could not be stable at phi and zero. It has to fall either on this side or on this side. The field, will, the stable point for the field will be the minimum stable point will be either this or this. Now, if you take here 
as this uh, as like as minus so in that case you take this as minus and this is plus the values will be just like this the values will be 96 minus 9 minus 24 uh, minus 9 0 minus 9 minus 24 uh, again minus 9 and plus 96. It means at minus 4 values, at minus 4 here, suppose this is minus 4 value, you have plus 96. At minus 3, it is minus 9. So, 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 and it's minus 24. And then again, minus 9. At, at 0 here, it's again 5. So this is just like if you take this one as negative, this as positive, the graph, the variation of the potential with the values of phi will be just like this. So in this case, the proportionality is minimum at either side of phi is equal to zero. At either side, phi is equal to zero. <coughs> this means that the field settles to such a value where it is not zero, or the field settles not at zero, the potential is minimal at this point. Let the values of the <coughs> uh, field at minimum potential is uh, plus v or minus v. Suppose this is uh, plus v and this is uh, minus v. This is that. That's why we say that there is a Higgs field permeating the whole space because field of all particles electrons quarks etc settles at its zero value and obey the parabolic path now <coughs> to find the value of v this is the uh, the potential the field at the minimum potential uh, what we have to do is to because we know that the value of the field the field varies uh, the square of phi square and phi plus. So we want the minimum values of uh, <coughs> the field to find the minimum the, the value of field. Here, the potential is minimum. Is minimum. What we have to do is to differentiate it with respect to the phi and equate it to zero. So if you differentiate <coughs> d e by d phi, d is a function of potential, the function of field, and so it will be uh, mu square phi plus lambda phi q. Differentiate this one, and from here you will get uh, uh, mu square minus lambda phi square or phi square minus mu by lambda phi square mu square by lambda So 
back in our car. Yeah. 